Um, our next comedian is a correspondent for Mike. Please put your hands together for Mama Dude Najaye. Yeah. Yo, what's good, everyone? Happy fucking Monday. What's good? Yeah, my name is Mamadou and Jai, and uh, that name sucks, right? It's not a fun name to have in America ever, um, especially now. I can't go do basic things with that name. For instance, if I want to go get food, I have to explain everything about my name. If I want to get tacos, I have to be like, hey, can I get two tacos? Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, what's the name you want for the order? Um, Mamadou. Oh my God, it's exotic. Where's it from? West Africa. There's a West Africa? In fact, fuck the tacos. I'm on my way out. I don't want to do this right now. It's like a thing I have to deal with every single time. So whenever I go out, I lie. I say my name is AJ, because it's two letters and you can't fuck it up. So I'll go out to Panera, order a chicken noodle soup bread bowl, because I'm a fancy boy, and say, my name is AJ. It's two letters, you can't fuck it up. So tell me why this lady came out the back like Aj, is there an Aj here? Aj, your chicken little soup bread bowls ready, Aj? And I'm like, girl, you don't even know how hard it could have been. It could have been so much worse for you guys. Uh, can I talk to y'all about birds for a second? <laughs> y'all don't give a fuck, but still. Um, uh, when I moved to New York, I was young and dumb and didn't know how the world worked. And I saw this pigeon at Broadway Junction, landed in the station at the, at the A stop. That's like underground. So I'm like, all right, this bird wants to take the train. I'm not going to tell it to stop. So I'm 7 a.m. I'm trying to get to work. And I see this dude come down the stairs really upset. And he's like, hey, you can't talk to me that way on his phone. Just scream it. He's like 1 p.m. mad at 7.30 a.m. So he's like really upset. And he sees this bird and he kicks the bird into the subway grate. And me, being young and dumb, yelled across the platform, yo, that's a bird, as if he didn't know what he did. And then he turned, like, who's next? So I turned to be one with the pillar. So I was hoping that he thought all pillars have book bags. I escaped the situation, unscathed. Uh, I now know that I've been in New York two and a half years. I get it now. Like. Punching birds apparently is like a, a way of life. The other day I was walking down the street and like a pigeon was flying at me, you know, like birds here don't care. So it's flying straight at me, like a legendary guardian of Gahul, straight in my face. And it's about to hit me and I have to make a decision. Am I gonna fight this bird? Or am I gonna walk away from this bird? So I decided to walk away from this bird because I'm not a strong man. And this bird is close to my face and I turn to get out of the way and I punch the bird directly in the face in the middle of broad daylight on Broadway in Bushwick, and this dude down the street goes, yo nigga, you just punched a bird. So I'm hoping that this is a chain of events that I just caught myself in and I'm now finally out of it. And the next, someone will kick a pigeon and then it just continues the circle of life, you know how that goes. Uh, I used to be a seventh grade science teacher um, in Best Eye before I was a comedian. And it's sad because I feel like I'm a deadbeat dad to my kids. Like I, I left to go chase my dreams and take care of them. I feel like a deadbeat dad to 72 children at once. It's insane, it's a weird feeling. Cause I loved my kids, I loved them to death. Cause seventh grade's a terrible year. Everyone had a terrible seventh grade life, right? Everyone did, cool. Uh, one of my insecurities when I was a kid is that I had a higher voice than a lot of the kids that I was you know, around at that age. And now that I'm in seventh grade teaching these kids and like I have a second chance at this, I still have the same insecurity. Like I still had a higher voice than some of the kids that I taught, which sucks because, you know, I have to have authority. And if I don't, you know, have a deeper voice, they're not gonna listen to me. I can't point to a kid and be like, hey, Jamiel, come here. What? No, you're right, you stay there. I'll come to you. I'm not gonna tell you what to do. That's on me, I should, I need to know my boundaries. You want some coffee? I could bring coffee directly to your desk, Jami Elf. That'll be something you would like. It's a weird, weird dynamic. Thing is with kids, like, you have to find a way to connect with them when you're a teacher. I'm like, you know, younger, but they think that I'm like 35 years old. So I had to find a way to connect with them. So I taught my kids how to roast each other. Because kids, when they're in seventh grade, it already kind of fucking sucks to be there, but they're already really mean to each other. But I'm like, let's fine tune it and find like the ways. I'm trying to make the next generation of comedians. See what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to do that. But you know, you know when like you are, you know, battling your dad on something, chess, video games, arm wrestling, then you beat your dad and then you become the dad. You know that sort of feeling? Well, a kid once roasted me so bad, caught me with a what are those really good in front of the entire class and I couldn't recover. I was like, it's bad because I'm a comedian, I'm a teacher, I'm already losing so much power so I had to be an adult about it. And I waited till parent-teacher conferences to ask his mom out on a date. Uh, 
Because the only thing worse than being a deadbeat dad to 72 kids at once is being a deadbeat dad to 71 kids and being one kid's actual stepdad. So, what's wrong with that? Uh, one thing they don't teach you about teaching is uh, bathroom duty. Bathroom duty is 10 minutes a day or I'm the bouncer to the bathroom. It's a demoralizing for all involved. Thanks for the class in the back. It's a terrible, terrible feeling. But you know, when I'm late, I have a lot of responsibility. These kids unsupervised are fucking insane. So one time, I was late, I see the door down the hall closed, I run down, push the door open, underground crying rings already started, ladies and gentlemen. Kids are just trading Pokemon cards, throwing dice, bad shit. So I'm freaking out, I'm like, oh shit, what am I gonna do? So I square up, in my biggest, deepest voice, I'm like, everyone get back to class. These kids start running around, I'm like, yeah, I'm the man. I got this, these kids run away. I'm about to leave when I hear a noise at one of the stalls. I push the door open and there is a grown ass 12 year old standing on the toilet, like standing on it and balancing so I can't see him so we can continue whatever they were doing. And I look him in the eyes, I'm like, yo, why are you standing on the toilet? And he said, nigga, I ain't standing on no toilet. Nah, you're right, that toilet's under you. I shouldn't have done that, that's on me. I shouldn't be stepping over my boundaries in that sort of way. Would you, I'm on my way out. I could get some coffee directly to the stall if that's something you would like. This is a weird situation you get put in. Um, a hot take, uh, we have a fuck boy in chief right now. Um, kind of fucking sucks. It's amazing though, he's almost 100 days in and he hasn't left us for a younger country yet. So like, that's impressive. I knew this dude was trash very early on. I think we all did. But one thing that I just can't get over, and I keep thinking about it every single day, is that like we took Twitter away from a grown 70-year-old man and then two days later gave him nuclear codes. That's like taking Legos away from a kid and then giving that kid nuclear codes. You know, like it doesn't make any sense. But we did it. Second reason I know this dude is trash is because one time I was watching uh, 60 Minutes and there was an episode where the lady goes... Mr. Trump, do you know that there's hate crimes happening in your name around the country? And he says the sentence, hate crimes, I hate those. Funniest sentence ever already. <laughs> then he goes, you want me to tell him to stop it? Looks down the barrel of the camera and goes, stop it. <laughs> Anyone who's familiar with the TV program, Dora the Explorer, <laughs> knows that you can say swipe or no swiping, but swipe or going to keep swiping, you know? Like it's not gonna change just like that. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. Um, I've been black for a while now. Um, oh yeah, thanks. Uh, I've been black for a while now, and being black this long, people ask me lots of questions, especially around the election, being like, hey, have hate crimes risen against you? I'm like, nah, dog, they just accessorize now. They're wearing red hats, it's like not that different. Like one thing that people don't realize, I'm not only black, but I'm also a Muslim and an immigrant. So I feel like racist people, they only care about one thing, it's how you look like, and that's it. So I feel like I have to sell myself to them. I feel like Billy Mays. They're just like, hey, nigger, I hate you. And I'm like, but wait, there's more. I'm also a Muslim, and I'm also an immigrant. RIP Billy Mays, I miss you. Um, it's weird, because people don't know. Does any, is anyone in here Muslim before I make any assumptions? Cool, just me. I can tell you whatever the fuck I want. Um, yeah, I'm Muslim, and it's like weird, because people don't know much about Muslim. Like, we're the same as everyone else. Like, we listen to Maroon 5 and shit. Like, it's not like, it's not that deep. You know what I'm saying? One thing that Muslims do is we pray five times a day. Five times a day. I don't do it as much anymore as I got older because I don't wanna feel like I'm thirsty to God, you know, if that makes sense to you. <laughs> Ladies, you know, you up, you up, you up, you up. I'll hit you tomorrow, every day, for my entire life, from 1.7 billion Muslims. I'll take that one for the team, Allah. You're welcome, God. I'm a DJ, and you know, when you DJ, people request songs. Excuse me, monsters request songs. Just let me do what I'm fucking doing, y'all. People come up and request, the, you'll hear Migos, Flocka, Kendrick, and they'll be like, you know what this party needs? Journey. Like, I don't think so. I don't think so. One time, this nice young white lady came up to me and said, excuse me, do you have the song Niggas in Paris by Kanye West? The gasps are right. And I looked at her like, the fuck did you just say to me? And she says, oh, you probably tripping because I said nigga. And you just said it twice. And she says this where I'm my life. Hey man, I'm a nigga, you're a nigga. He's a nigga, she's a nigga. We all niggas, man. Then she backed away from me like this as if this was her entire plan. Disappeared presumably from existence. And 
I wasn't even mad she said nigga so many times. I'm mad that I'm 25 years old. I never heard the word nigga conjugated before. Like I nigga, you nigga, he, she, we nigga, never in my life. Doesn't make any sense. People say whatever the fuck they want to me on the street. It's really weird. One dude on the train, 7 a.m. I like being on the train at 7 a.m., I'll be honest. But I was on the train and this dude came up to me. He's sitting on the train. He was rocking. I saw him like freaking out for a second. And then he got up, got in my face and goes, racism's over and runs off the train. <laughs> and like, guys, racism's not over, right? Right? Cool. I had to be clear because some of y'all are like, huh, I don't know. <laughs> Could be. But racism is not over. Do you guys know it's 2017 and blacks still can't move first in chess? I don't care. I just know I can beat most of y'all in chess. That's what it, that's what it is. Um, the reason why racism is not going anywhere is because it keeps popping up in weird ways. Like, for instance, like my black male friend recently had sex with a white woman. And she started saying things like, yo, and dope. He sexually transmitted Ebonics to her. So I was immediately mad. I was like, yo, this is fucked up. You can't be like this. That's really messed up. And I was like, it would be dope if it worked the other way around. Like if I had sex with a white woman, it could finally say, hello, officer. Yeah. Pepsi. So it would be a dope thing if that worked out. I'll leave you guys with this. Uh, I get in fights on the internet a lot because I'm black and people are angry about that. And one time this dude goes, I bet you wish white people were slaves. I'm like, <laughs> well, it was a tweet, so that's how I read it. <laughs> so, uh, and I was like, nah, don't wish that, but you gotta admit that was a funny sight to even think about. I'm gonna lose 115% of the audience from this, but it's entirely fine. Just imagine for a second, it's white slavery, just a bunch of able-bodied white men, you know, picking cotton in their Birkenstocks. Sun beating down on their back, someone slathering SPF 45 on it, singing Caucasian spirituals. Just a city boy. <laughs> That's all I got for y'all. Thank you so much. My name is Mahmoud Jai.